Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking a little bit more about the TRAPPIST-1 system that was discovered a few months ago and we're going to discuss the planets in TRAPPIST-1 and specifically their composition and their appearance. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So a very new study uh, published in June of 2017 talks about what each of these planets in TRAPPIST system may actually not only look like, but what they actually are composed of and specifically explores the idea of them potentially being habitable and Earth-like. Now, prior to this, all of this was a speculation. We kind of knew their masses uh, that were discovered based on the observations in comparison to the mass of the sun. And we kind of knew um, what they may or may not have, such as, for example, since they're all uh, tidally locked, they all probably have very hot one side, very cold other side, and possibly like a twilight-like area with maybe liquid water on the border here. In Universe Sunbox, unfortunately, they don't really look like this, but uh, you can check out one of my previous videos where I actually showed you what they may look like. But in reality, though, uh, a lot of the newer studies started to reveal some really incredible things about these planets, and specifically that it seems that most of them maybe are Earth-like in terms of composition, except for the last one. And so today we're going to investigate this, and I'm going to kind of talk a little bit more about how the scientists actually figured this all out. And so let's start with the one planet that is probably not going to be very hospitable to human um, colonists because it's actually apparently 25% water. So this is actually the planet TRAPPIST-1F. We're going to zoom into it. And so the scientists, uh, specifically here, we're talking about a researcher by the name of Dr. Quarles, uh, a former researcher at Homer Dodge Department of Physics and Astronomy at the OU College of Arts and Sciences. A pretty long name. But anyway, so this person uh, studied these for quite a while and he basically just um, used various simulation to try to estimate what kind of planets might be actually created in this type of system. And then also looked at the so-called uh, eclipses of various or not various, but all of these objects, um, as they passed in front of the star. So this would be an example of an eclipse. So let me just actually remove some of these so you can see them better. So when a planet passes in front of the star, it eclipses it a little bit, and so the luminosity of the star decreases. And that way we can actually determine the size of a planet. So obviously, if the planet is very large, it's going to cover a bigger part of the star. And if the planet is very small, in terms of radius, it's going to cover much smaller parts. And so that's what uh, the scientists in, in this particular study did. And uh, it turns out that TRAPPIST-1F is slightly larger in terms of size to, compared to everything else. And even though its mass is approximately 70-ish, um, 67 or 68 percent mass of Earth, it's actually about the same size as Earth, which suggests that it is actually about 25% water. And so here we go. So it's about 25% water, meaning that the majority of this planet is probably either covered with very unusual gas-like water on this side because it's facing the star at all times, then probably has some kind of a liquid water here and very likely has ice deposits here, or for all we know, it might actually be completely different. It might be a very unusual type of a planet. But the important thing here is that because its size is very similar to the size of Earth, so here's Earth for a comparison. So there's Earth and there's um, TRAPPIST-1F. And because the mass of this planet is much lower than Earth, we can estimate that it's probably made up of more, oh, or sorry, not more, but less dense materials, making its density much lower, probably something like... 3.2 or close to 3 grams per centimeter cube, which is consistent with some of the um, moons of Jupiter, for example, and moons of Saturn that are actually made up of a lot of water. And so for all we know, this is actually going to be a very interesting world that is something we've never seen before. But the other worlds might actually be familiar to us. And specifically here, we're talking about all of the other objects in the system, 
so it turns out that all of the other six planets in Trappist system are actually rocky. As a matter of fact, um, their density is very similar to density of planets like Venus, Mars, Mercury, and Earth. So if we go through them individually, you'll see that their composition is relatively similar to Earth in terms of uh, amounts of silicates and iron. And uh, we don't really know if there is any water. We don't really know if there's any atmosphere, of course. Uh, chances are probably maybe not, but maybe there is some if, if they have magnetosphere. Um, of course, the only difference here is Trappist 1F, which is 25% water or possibly some other ices, some other things like methane and ethane, but it's probably just water. Um, and interestingly, all of these were discovered basically using the same technique of so-called um, photometric observations, basically looking at planets as they pass in front of the star. Let's actually see if we can simulate this. As they pass in front of the star, there you go. There is a bit of a occultation, a bit of a decrease in luminosity. And depending on how much the luminosity is decreased, we can actually estimate the size of the planet. And then we can use that, knowing the mass of the planet, to try to estimate the density. Because density is uh, always mass per volume. But at the same time, this also creates a really, really interesting opportunity for some of the other planets here. Specifically planets like TRAPPIST-1D and TRAPPIST-1E. Now, both of these are in the relatively okayish region of the solar system um, in the Goldilocks zone or basically the habitable zone. So maybe, okay, maybe this one is a little bit too close, so it might be a little bit hotter, but uh, 1E and also to some extent 1G are terrestrial and the only thing we don't really know about them is if they have a magnetosphere and if they have liquid water. So these two objects and possibly this one here are actually now very exciting for us to study because we now are pretty certain that their composition is very Earth-like. And this also means that they might be very Earth-like objects not too far away from us, only within about 40 light years away from our planet. And at the same time, these types of stars, even though they might be very active, will live for a very, very, very long time. As a matter of fact, uh, red dwarfs can live up to several trillion years, uh, which is like thousands of times longer than our own sun, meaning that these planets will actually have this kind of environment for billions and trillions of years to come. So for uh, all we know, there might not only be life here that already has developed, but we might be able to use these planets later on for our, our own existence, and we might be able to find someone to coexist here with as well. And so this new research definitely increases the chance for at least three or maybe at least two of these planets to be colonizable, habitable, and maybe even already have life on them. So that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video and introduce this new research from um, summer of 2017. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and subscribe, potentially support this channel on Patreon to help us grow and to help me make better videos in the future. And let's finish this video by exploding everything in the system, making very beautiful supernova as well. Now, this is obviously not realistic because a star like this would never go supernova, but you know, this is a game, we can do whatever we want. And anyway, so that's it. And anyway, I've destroyed the system yet again. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.